let us begin in prayer. Tara Rabbah, Abya, dear Father, we thank you as we come forward to you right now. We sing your praises, O oh, magnificent King, for giving us another breath of life. Thank you. We thank you so abundantly, Father, for affording us this day, opening our eyes, Father, and allowing us to get out of our beds this morning. Father, we pray unto you with gratefulness. We're so appreciative, Father, to your mighty hand in our lives and how you touch each and every one of us, how you provide and sustain us, Father. For we cannot take anything for granted, not one moment, not one day, Father. And we pray in this moment, on this wonderful day, this wonderful Shabbat, giving you homage, giving you honor, giving you respect, giving you esteem, Father, saying thank you for waking us up and keeping us alive this day, Father. Thank you for the provisions of our clothes and our our home, our dwelling place, Father. Thank you for uh, the clothes on our back, the food that you allow us to have to be nourished father we thank you for those that you have put in our lives to um, help us um, on this journey on this walk father we are thankful for all these things and so much more that we may not know that we may not see that we may not uh, take for granted father but we thank you for all these things on this day we pray for your Ruach to be with us, to lead us, to guide us, to operate our very beings, Father, uh, in all that we do so we can be walking in truth in your way, Father, as we strive to be closer to you and to be built up as lively stones of your wonderful kingdom. Father, we pray once again, thank you. May you touch everyone who is here to fellowship with us now or uh, that may hear this later, Father. Let, uh, let your word go forth and not come back void. We love you, we cherish you, and we thank you. Toda Rabba Yah. Hallelujah. All right. As always, we want to thank Ab Yah for everyone whom he leads to uh, join us, fellowship, study with us every week, Father. Um, for first timers and veterans of life, we say Shabbat, Shabbat Shalom, Shalom from Fadia and, and now the Beraka over the reading of this week's Torah portion. Barukata Yahua Eloheinu Melek Halom Asher Bakar Banu Melko Haamim Banatan Lanu Et Torato Barukata. Yahua no ten hatara. Barukata Yahua our Elohim, King of the universe, who chose us from all the peoples and gave to us his Torah. Barukata Yahua, giver of the Torah. All right. So, it is week three, as I said already, and here we go with Parasha Bo. We always like to say Bo and go. That's <laughs> kind of the thing. So, how about we get the Ivrit, please? All right. Vayomer Yahua El Moshe. Bo El Paro. Ki ani hik bati et lebu ve et leb abade leman shiti ototi ele bakarbu. Yahua said to Moshe, Go to Pharaoh, for I have made him and his servants hard hearted so that I can demonstrate these signs of mine 
among them. All right, so we got BOGO. I mean, Bogo. no. Bo means go. <laughs> As in, go tell Pharaoh who runs the show. That I do not rap, but that was kind of, <laughs> that kind of went though, right? By now, we should be seeing what it, <laughs> what is really going on. <laughs> and Pharaoh should be starting to get the point. However, is he is the question. So, Father's making a point. Our creator is making a point here. He begins this section of the Torah with a command to Moshe to bow. Tell Pharaoh that Yahua Elohe Ha Abrim wants to know how long you're going to refuse me. So now we're going to go to Exodus 10 and 3. Exodus 10 and 3. <clears throat> Moshe and Aharon went in to Pharaoh and said to him here is what Yahweh Elohim of the Hebrews says how much longer will you refuse to submit to me let my people go so that they can worship me all right so the point is reflected by the repetition of Father's name to Pharaoh. Okay, trying to get him to know him, right? Through each plague, this one being the eighth, Father was defeating an Egyptian deity, right? Through each plague, Pharaoh was learning who Father was. He also was learning who Israel was to Father and who Moses was as an Elohim. The point is that it was time for our father to make himself known and he was doing it on multiple levels now this indeed is one of our key points now speaking of our key points they are as follows number one properly focusing our thoughts and energy now where we place our focus is where our power lies if our scriptural focus is not in the right place we risk missing the greater wisdom father has for us number two depth in passover now Pesach encompasses a multitude of important principles we want to emphasize one or maybe two that may be overlooked and three as we just went over father's revealing the way father is uncovering his self is worthy of great examination in order to magnify our limited view of what's actually taking place throughout these scriptures so let's set the stage by going over the tour portions outline for this week all right so here's our portion outline for both the torah exodus 10 1 the eighth plague locust exodus 10 21 the ninth plague darkness exodus 11 1 Warning of the final plague. Exodus 12 1. The first pass over instituted. Exodus 12 29. The tenth plague. Death of the firstborn. Exodus 12 33. The exodus from Ramesses to Sukkot. Exodus 12 43. Directions for the Passover. Exodus 13 3. The festival of unleavened bread. Exodus 13.11, the consecration of the firstborn. Prophets, Jeremiah 46.13, Babylonia will strike Egypt. Jer Jeremiah 46.27, Elohim will save Israel. In the gospel is John 19.31-37. Now, our 
Next question would be our second key point, where to place our focus. Now, as we find pretty often, where to place our focus when studying the Torah can be a challenge, especially when they are taboos and or distracticons lurking in the text. That's right, taboos and distract kind. What do you say? Let's go to Exodus 10, 1 through 2. Exodus 10, 1 through 2. Yahweh said to Moshe, Go to Pharaoh, for I have made him and his servants hard hearted, so that I can demonstrate these signs of mine among them, so that you can tell your son and grandson about what I did to Egypt and about my signs that I demonstrated among them and so that you will all know that I am Yahuwah alright so here is father telling our forefathers that they were supposed to tell us as in their children what happened in Egypt this is called the quote unquote oral Torah some may view it in a negative <laughs> we don't talk about it that's, that's it's oral it's I get it yeah, yeah. alright some may view it in a negative light or even ignore it not talk about it altogether. however the oral Torah is a part of the Torah and has value we'll touch on later but this is taboo that some may blow out of proportion or not pay any attention to at all where do we place our focus let's continue now with Exodus 12 1 through 2 Yahweh spoke to Moshe and Aharon in the land of Egypt he said you are to begin your calendar with this month. It will be the first month of the year for you. Mm. Mm. The calendar. Uh -oh. Along with Father's name, this can be one of the biggest distracted kinds for us today. Not that it isn't important, but because it is important. But where do we place our focus is our question. Now, here's a little story. Uh -oh. During Sukkot, the brethren we were in fellowship with got distracted, distracted kinds all over the place, distracted from the focus of growing together during Father's appointments. Now, the calendar itself wasn't the issue. It was what was happening during the time, the appointed time, we were supposed to be spending together. Now, too often distractions or distracticons happen to the people of Israel. As we read and study the Torah with the intent to properly apply it to our lives, let us focus on the deeper, more important messages Father is teaching us and not get distracted by divisive issues or debating taboo. We can get snared on either one of these passages and may miss what Father is showing us, which is a vital aspect of his Torah and the establishment of the calendar for the united kingdom, not the divided kingdom. Okay, okay. So now that we understand that we should focus in, let's take a focused look at Passover. All right. A focus look at Pesach. Okay. But before we put our direct focus on Pesach, mm -hmm. let's get some insight from the passage of Scripture before it, which just happens to be the plague of darkness. Okay. So let's take a look at Exodus 10, 21 through 23. Yahweh said to Moshe, 
reach out your hand toward the sky and there will be darkness over the land of Egypt darkness so thick it can be felt Moshe reached out his hand toward the sky and there was a thick darkness in the entire land of Egypt for three days hmm. people couldn't see each other and no one went anywhere for three days but all the people of Israel had light in their homes can you say out of darkness and into the light <laughs> this was the ninth and second to last plague it is clearly distinctive Egypt was in darkness yet Israel had light from our studies in Genesis we know that the darkness can represent chaos and light can represent order what we can extract from this is that Israel had obtained some sort of order through the ordeal of the plagues after all if you had a ringside seat to an all-out war in your best interest where one opponent has all but been obliterated when you get your act together even just halfway revealed in this passage is the establishment of order and life just like in Genesis father has established order signified by light and is about to sprout new life new kingdom in Israel as alluded to by the number three that's right a couple numbers again now I know when I personally think of Pesach three days aka light and three nights aka dark come to mind but three days of darkness and three days of light are found here first in the original narrative leading to Pesach we see evidence of this in Exodus 11 2 through 3 all right, Exodus 11, 2 through 3. Now tell the people that every man is to ask his neighbor and every woman her neighbor for gold and silver jewelry. Yahweh made the Egyptians favorably disposed toward the people. Moreover, Moshe was regarded by Pharaoh's servants and the people as a very great man in the land of Egypt. All right. Father may Israel obtain favor from the Egyptians and Moses became great among them let me say this again father may Israel obtain favor from the people of Egypt and may Moses a great man to them let's think about this remember Moses Moses was an exiled murderer from Egypt yes he was an exile murderer from Egypt and Israel was the slave class of Egypt there was a status change and a reordering of the entire society of Egypt the pyramid flipped upside down <laughs> those who were at the bottom of the pyramid got flipped and stood on top of the pyramid mm -hmm. all by father's hand and all leading to Pesach alright so now we're going to take a focus look at Pesach continue with Exodus 12 1 through 2 Yahweh spoke to Moshe and Aharon in the land of Egypt. He said, You are to begin your calendar with this month. It will be the first month of the year for you. Speak to all the assembly of Israel and say, On the tenth day of this month, each man is to take a lamb or kid for his family, one per household. Now we move to Exodus 12 and 28. Then the people of Israel went and did as Yahweh had ordered. Moshe and Aharon. That is what they did. 
All right, so we're going to take a look at what's really going on here. By properly focusing our attention on the text, we can note that this is where Israel gets this, uh, excuse me, gets the instructions on Pesach and goes to do them. They actually get the instructions and goes out to get their lamb and get prepared for Passover. Next, in verses 29 through 32, the judgment is administered. And then lastly, in verses 33 through 42, we get the details of the actual exodus. They actually pack up their stuff, gird it up, ready to roll, and they depart from Egypt. Got it? Verse 42 is the last verse detailing the actual exodus. So, what does the very next verse say? What does it say? Let's see. So, we're going to look at Exodus twelve forty three, And Yahweh said to Moses and Aaron, This is the statue of the Passover. No foreigner shall eat of it. Okay. Okay. This is the statue of the Passover. But didn't Israel leave Egypt already mm. This verse Is a sign Letting us know that this Passage is not In chronological order In fact Verses 43 through 51 Are more Instructions Related to Pesach But Israel Has already left Egypt Do we get that they get more instructions on what to do and how to do the Passover when the Passover has already been done. There is an amazing reason why the structure of this text is not in chronological order. Father is fulfilling a part of the covenant that he spoke about years and years earlier. But if we were to get distracted way back at, let's say, verse number two, we may not even notice what's going on in the text. Distracted time. We'll let everyone look into it for themselves to see what you uncover. And we're going to shift our focus to another part of the narrative that stands out to us. The observance of the night of Passover the observance of the night so in the hallelujah scriptures Exodus 12 and 42 begins it is a night to be observed unto Yah and depending on the translation the word observe may be rendered differently so we want to focus our energy here so we can know exactly what we're supposed to be observing on Pesach night. Let's go over two additional translations of this verse. All right. So let's get to the verse once again. Exodus 12, 42. This was a night when Yahuwah kept vigil to bring them out of the land of Egypt. And this same night continues to be a night when Yahuwah keeps vigil for all the people of Israel through all their generations. So you said keep, keep, they kept vigil? Kept vigil. So what's the next translation you got? All right. That says vigil. Vigil, keep mm -hmm. vigil. Next translation says, it was a night of watching by Yahuwah to bring them out of the land of Egypt so that this same night is a night of watching kept to Yahuwah by all the people of Israel throughout their generations so we got observe keep vigil or watching what was the Hebrew behind it so we can understand what it's want us to do all right. So the Hebrew behind watching, keep vigil, or observe is shemur. Shin, yo, mem, bab, resh, translated as safeguarding and defined as to keep safe, to protect. 
KJV translates it as observed, as uh, kind of like the Hallelujah scriptures. It is H8107, and it comes from the Hebrew word Shamar, Shin, Mem, Resh. Translation, safeguard. Def definition, the act or the duty of protecting or defending to watch over or guard in the sense of preserving or protecting to keep watch it is strong's h8104 and also h8109 all right so it is a night of preserving and protecting so father preserved and protected israel and israel is supposed to preserve and protect pesach throughout our generations so this is what it means to keep or observe Passover. Many of us may be familiar with those who question if we can keep the Pesach or keep the commandments. We can't keep them commandments. Listen, I'm trying to say. But the understanding of keep is, in most cases, is referring to accurately executing the instructions given. Here's some other verses that further define keep. Keep these commandments. <laughs> Proverbs 2 and 20 Thus you will walk on the way of good people And keep to the paths of the righteous Alright so keeping to the path or righteousness Doesn't have a rigorous to do list attached to it You're not here. guarding the, You got a sword on the you path got, you, Listen you got to guard it Keep Now we go on to Proverbs 4 and 21. My son, pay attention to what I am saying. Incline your ear to my words. Don't let them out of your sight. Keep them deep in your heart. Oh. So keep in this verse is not physically putting words in our actual hearts. You can't just jam something in it, right? That wouldn't that be, would be keeping so yourself too good. <laughs> in both cases, it's preserving and protecting from harm. This is what we are to do with Father's Word and His Pesach. And we're to do it generation after generation. Where have we heard that recently? Generation after yeah. generation. Generation after generation let's go to exodus 12 14 this will be a day for you to remember and celebrate as a festival to yahuwah from generation to generation you are to celebrate it by perpetual regulation that rhymes a little bit Remember, in this verse, is the Hebrew word Zikron, H2146, meaning to recall a past event and or an action based on a past event. There's, there's almost identical language used with Father revealing his name to Moshe at the burning bush. Uh oh. Exodus 3.15 This is my name forever. This is how I am to be remembered generation after generation. This does two profound things. Number one, by defining what keep means in Hebrew and knowing that we are to do it through our generations after generation after generation we're able to link the fact that we should recall and act upon the Pesach or Passover with our recalling and acting upon Father's name it also does something else we see once again all this has to do with Father revealing his name and himself. That's our second point. So, let's go back to our second point, which is our main point. 
the revealing of Father's name. Back to our main point. Exodus 5 and 2. But Pharaoh said, Who is Yahuwah that I should obey his voice and let Israel go? I do not know Yahuwah, and moreover I will not let Israel go. Exodus 10, 1 through 2. Yahuwah said to Moshe, Go to Pharaoh, for I have made him and his servants hard-hearted, so that I can demonstrate these signs of mine among them, so that you can tell your son and grandson about what I did to Egypt and about my signs that I demonstrated among them, and so that you will all know that I am Yahweh. Exodus twelve thirty one. He summoned Moshe and Aharon by night and said, Up and leave my people, both you and the people of Israel, and go serve Yahuwah as you said. Not how he was trying to tell him to do it, right? <laughs> so within seven chapters, Pharaoh goes from not knowing father to sending Israel out of Egypt to go and serve father. So it looks like through the plague, Pharaoh got to know father very well. That's right. Yeah. He wasn't saying I don't know him no more. No, he wasn't. Then he had to ask for a blessing. Like, that's me. <laughs> so to highlight our point, we want to emphasize what happened through the plagues. Fathers revealing through the plagues. Now please note that um, Egypt has and had many, many, many deities or, or, or whatnot, and some had numerous names and or had similar things they were in charge of, etc., etc. So you might find some different points or, or different lists uh, than what we have, but this is what our research has thus far. So Yahua defeats the deities of Egypt. So first we have, uh, for the first plague, we have Happy, an Egyptian deity of the Nile, where Yahuwah turned water to blood. The Nile uh, had an Egyptian deity, but Yah turned the water to blood. Also, a great point is that um, the Hebrew baby boys were thrown into the Nile, and uh, obviously, um, Hebrew blood was in the Nile, but Father gave Egypt back blood so it's kind of like repaying uh, Egypt for what they did earlier in the narrative also too Heket was the Egyptian goddess of fertility now water and renewal the Egyptian goddess of fertility water and renewal and had a head like a frog Yahuwah sent them some frogs three Geb was the Egyptian deity of the earth. Yahuwah sent lice from the dust of the earth. Number four, uh, Kepri, Egyptian god of creation with the head of a fly. Yah sent them flies. Number five, Hathor, the Egyptian goddess of love and protection. She had a head of a cow. Now, Yah killed all the cows and livestock in Egypt. Number six, Isis, the Egyptian goddess of peace and medicine. Yah turned ashes via Moses, and everybody got boils on their skin. No medicine was curing them. Number six, or number seven, uh, Newt, the Egyptian goddess of the sky. Yah sent hell mingled with fire from the sky. So as we kind of get to this point, we get to number eight. And we can really sum up a lot of these deities, all the big name deities, Anubis, uh, Osiris, Seth, and some of the ones we've named already. Because at this point, Father had defeated numerous deities and not one of them 
stood to protect Egypt. Now, this is a major message that is being stated, not the little deity of protection or medicine or fertility or earth or any of these deities stood up to father. When Yah unleashed the locusts at this point, which devour whatever food and crops remained from his previous onslaughts, nothing withstood his attack. And lastly, the chief deity at, at the time was Ra, the sun god, the supreme Egyptian deity. Um, Yah sent darkness. He made it dark for three days and not even the sun deity could make the sun come out. <laughs> lastly, Pharaoh himself. Now, death of the firstborn of Egypt was cutting off the lineage of Pharaoh's house and consequently every house in Pharaoh's kingdom thereby destroying all of Egypt house by house all to reveal his name by the way right so what have we learned in closing? Father used Egypt and Pharaoh to make the point of divulging who he was. We learn the text helps us see the magnification of this through various nuances in its composition. Focusing on snares or distracticons, as we like to call them, can keep us from a deeper understanding of Father's word. And there is more to the story of Pesach than what we may typically focus on. All this await, there's more. <laughs> I love to say that. Right. <laughs> the Passover narrative is less than half of the book of Exodus. However, we may think it takes up more space in the book of Exodus. It's all the things within the account in conjunction with the rest of scripture that makes it stand out so much. Israel's freedom and the judgment of the quote unquote gods of Egypt are major cogs. But our creator takes center stage. Can we see that it's not just Pharaoh and Egypt who is learning who father is, but it's also Israel who is learning who he is and who they are mm. Exodus 10 1 through 2 okay. Yahweh said to Moshe go to Pharaoh for I have made him and his servants hard hearted so that I can demonstrate these signs of mine among them so that you can tell your son and grandson about what I did to Egypt and about my signs that I demonstrated among them and so that you will all know that I am Yahweh. Mm. Passover is about many things including the Mashiach of Israel. However, before we consider Israel's Mashiach shouldn't we know who Israel is? Mm -hmm. One of the most important aspects of Passover is that it serves to start teaching Israel, supposed to be orally, who Father is and who Israel is. The Father of the house lets it be known who's who in the house. All right, so we end off with this. Consider Pharaoh is not a name. Remember, through the narrative, we have the nameless Pharaoh. Well, Pharaoh actually isn't a name in Egyptian. It is pronounced by the Egyptian symbols per ah, and means great house. So, in building his house, our father tore down the great house of Egypt Pharaoh 
and his kingdom house by house. So with pleasure, we like to say it is all about the house. house. All about Yah's house. And with that, until next time, we say Shalom. All right, now the Berakah after the reading of the Torah. Barukata Yahua Eloheinu Melech Halom Asher Natan Lanu Torah Amet Bakayai Olam Nata Bitokinu Barukata Yahua Notan Ha Torah. Barukata Yahua, our Elohim, King of the Universe, who gave to us the Torah of truth and life everlasting set in our midst Barukata Yahua giver of the Torah Hallelujah Baruch Shem Kavo Malkuto Le'alam Vayed Baruch be his name whose honorable kingdom is forever and ever <laughs> Hallelujah <laughs> All right. Any comments or questions? Comments or questions? Comments oh. or questions? Wow. Uh, question. <laughs> um, one thing that stood out for me this week, comment, <laughs> not really question now, but um, was the fact of Pesach being a night of watching and. As we see, so much going on in the world. I'm not going to be a downer here, but uh, <laughs> as we see things going on, and um, as the sock is round in the corner, you know, after Kareem and everything, um, you know, having a different outlook on the watching part and the, you know, I don't think we truly think of like, are we are we going to escape somewhere or do something, you know. Um, well, depending on your mindset and what y'all have told you, but um, it just makes it more impactful of what are we really supposed to be doing uh, when we preserve and keep and observe um, during Pesach. So um, just being more mindful of that night whenever you keep it or, you know, whenever you observe it to just, you know, be asking more more those deeper questions of like what does this mean for us now as we observe it and um, guard it what what should we be looking for which can be that challenge of now because we not all together like they was all together you know they was talking to you man you got your stuff we gotta go you know whatever so <laughs> um, we all spread everywhere and um, so knowing that that greater escape is gonna look different so keeping that in mind as we you know continue to study Torah and strive to um, apply it to now how however he's leading each of us so a comment mm -hmm. did you like my comment no it's a good comment oh thank I, you I, okay see that I agree I agree da alright if nothing else we're going to pray out Tudah Rabbah of Yah, we thank you so, so very much for this Shabbat. And we thank you for the conclusion of this week. One for the books, for sure. We thank you for your excellency in being our Father and our King, our Creator, our All and our Everything. And being there for us and when we need you always. And um, just always hearing our prayers and listening and and making your perfect will be done and we just praise you for keeping us and guarding us and protecting us each and every day um, we thank you for your word and for allowing us to um, have favor to even read and learn anything about it um, 
and we just know we're scratching the surface and we just pray that you continue to reveal yourself to all of us and to show yourself uh, mighty in our lives as we strive to walk in your way each and every day we're so grateful and we're so grateful um, for Yahusha and your Ruach we're so grateful for the life you have afforded each of us to have each day and all those that we touch even when we don't know and um, just please help us to continue to grow in our walk and strive and endure father as there are tough things happening and going on but um you uh, give us our strength and we're so grateful that you um give us that because we can't do it without you for sure um so okay. grateful for this shabbat for your rest and so grateful for all that you are to each of us by hashem yahusha we thank you and may you continue to guard protect and keep us as you have father hallelujah and shabbat shalom Bye. Shabbat shalom. Bye. Shalom. Bye.